Connor. Welcome to day six of the challenge. Today, I want to talk about headlines. Now, headlines for your post are extremely, extremely important. Hopefully, by now, you understand that. Um, it's what often makes or breaks whether anybody's going to pay attention to what you're writing. A lot of new bloggers tend to make the mistake of thinking, well, just because you write it, people are going to read it. Not true at all. The, the, the dirty truth is that most of your blog posts really do not get read all the way through. In fact, many of them don't get read at all simply because the headline did not intrigue the reader. You have to think about it in terms of somebody who is subscribed to a whole bunch of blogs in an RSS feed reader, like Google Reader or something like that. They're scanning these headlines and they're looking for something that stands out and gets their attention. So not only are you competing against all this other noise that's in their feed, but you have to really hit something, have a promise in it, really get their attention to get them to make the click in the first place before they're even, you're even going to have a shot of building that relationship with them and getting them to read it. The only way that that's really not going to uh, happen is if you, you've already convinced them that your blog is extremely valuable, in which case they will read everything that you put out. But otherwise, you're pretty much depending on your headlines, and it's really, really important. So let's go over to my screen for a minute, and I want to show you a few headline formulas that you can start thinking about how you can use these things. Okay, the first one is a classic, and it basically lends itself to list posts and things like that. It's a matter of having some number up there. Some people like to go with even numbers. Some like to go with odd numbers. It doesn't really matter. And then a keyword phrase of some kind. Basically, whatever it, people are searching for, you would like to build that into your headline. And then you cap it off with some type of a curiosity phrase designed to make your headline stand out in the mix. Now, an example here that I've used before is if I were talking about blog post headlines like I am right now, and let's say that I was trying to get ranked in Google for the phrase blog post headlines, well that is my keyword phrase. So I do 10 blog post headlines, and then the curiosity phrase is that work every time they're tried. That's designed to get the human being to want to click on this headline. The keyword phrase is mainly there for Google. It's mainly there for the search engine spider. The curiosity phrase is there for the actual person to get them to want to click. Now another one is one that I call the rubberneck effect. It's basically the idea that people are attracted to um, accidents and problems. They really just want to see what's going on with other people. It's the same effect of why when we're going down the road, you'll see people slow down and look at a wreck. Even though it has nothing to do with them, they just want to see if anybody got hurt. It's this weird thing that we've all got inside of us. So you can use the, that same human tendency in your headlines. Some examples here are seven warning signs that, and then blah, blah, blah. Put in a keyword phrase, put in some curiosity, etc. Another one, warning, and then boom, whatever would work for your niche. And then another one would be the great ex blah, blah, blah hoax. People like conspiracy theory. So this is a way to get them to come in there and, and read that. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that you want to understand what keeps your readers up at night. You want to know what is bothering them. What are they trying to solve? And you want to get as specific as you can so that your headline basically just nails it. You want them to just look at this headline and go, okay, that's exactly what I need. And then they'll click on it. Now, another one is tapping into that sense of mystery. People do not like to not know the answer to something. They don't like to think that somebody else knows something that they don't. So you can tap into that with your headlines. And one classic way is referring to the secret, the secret to blah, whatever you want to talk about. Another one is little known ways to blah, blah, blah. Again, that little known ways things is a thing that makes you think that, well, other people might know it and they're getting good results with it, but I don't know what these things are. And it makes them want to click on that headline. Another one is to solve a problem or a pain point that your audience has. Some examples here are how to blank in five minutes flat. Again, this is a good headline because you got the how-to component. You've got the, the problem or the pain. That's going to probably be your keyword phrase because people are going to be searching for that. That's going to go in that blank. And then the in five minutes flat is a promise. It makes it seem succinct and there's an actual promise to the blog post behind this headline. So people are going to click on that because it actually has a, an immediate return or so they're going to think. Another one is 
X shortcuts for some problem that they've got. So whatever problem your audience might have, give them shortcuts to it, give them secrets to solve that, blah, blah, blah. You want to solve the problem or the pain. Another one is called piggybacking. Now, piggybacking is one that you guys may have seen Copyblogger do a whole lot. This is where they, they put in keywords that, to tap into celebrities' names or famous groups' names. So, famous person's top 10 tips for blah, blah, blah. Or the f something famous school of blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, if, if I were writing for bloggers, I mean, I don't know who a famous blogger would be. Let's say Darren Rouse. The Darren Rouse school of pro blogging or the Darren Rouse school of killer post headlines, something like that. I mean, it's just kind of a crazy example, but there, there it is. And then another one is mistakes, such as three blank mistakes that you're probably making today. Now, this one has a, a few things. One is people don't like to make mistakes, so that's going to stand out for them. And it's also a little bit of the rubberneck effect built into that because of that word mistakes. But the other thing is it has a bit of a promise into or, or a curiosity thing in there in that you're probably making them today. So it makes you really like, okay, what am I doing wrong today? And it makes them want to click on a headline like that. Now, before I end off here, I just want to make this point, and that is that you need to learn to use headlines in everything, whether you're doing a YouTube video, a blog, even on Twitter, I mean, wherever you're doing it, you need to learn to master creating crafty headlines because this is what gets people into the door to consume the content in the first place. So always be thinking about that. You know, another tip is to make sure that whenever you're reading other people's blogs, whenever you feel compelled to click on some headline, make note to yourself why that is. And maybe you want even want to keep a file of really great headlines that you've seen so that you can go back and reference them for ideas a little bit later. So that is day six of the challenge, and I will see you tomorrow.